My name is uh, Willing Ho, also I go by Will Ho. I'm an oceanographer at Naval Research Lab, Ocean Sciences Branch. Our work uh, involves uh, several layers. Uh, the main focus is currently on the underwater visibility. And uh, I also involved in uh, remote sensing applications and uh, underwater optics. For underwater visibilities, one of the things we try to understand at this stage is the relative contribution of the particles of dirt to the optical turbulence impacts. We try to understand what are the limits. And our recent results actually show that under cer certain conditions, optical turbulence will do more damage than the particles, especially in the case of high spatial frequencies, meaning the details. A simple example is that we can imagine we put a photo in the water. We look at the different, uh, uh, from a different uh, distance and different type of water. In the very clean water, we can see it from uh, quite far away, even if you put uh, on the bottom of, say, a swimming pool. With the turbulence involved, if the water starts to get moving because of the temperature or you are adding some salt, introducing salinity variation, we don't see the details of the picture. It disappears very fast. And uh, in terms of the uh, particle contribution, we know that so the swimming pool or the turbi turbidity of the water degrade both the low frequency and the high frequency elements, the details, and the overall picture. Meaning that if the water gets really dirty, it disappears not only the fine details, but also the picture itself. So their rules are different, but we're understanding now that their contributions are relatively different in terms of high, high spatial frequency elements. So we are working to mitigate the issues uh, in that regard. There's been many different approaches we devised to increase the resolution and increase the range. Uh, the simplest way is probably using um, the separation of the light source and the receiver so that you don't get the, a lot of backscatter light, sort of like the, we don't use the high beam uh, in a foggy or rainy day because all you see is the backscatter light. And another approach is using polarization. As we know by wearing the uh, sunglasses, you can actually see through the uh, surface of the water, uh, get to see the contents and the water. A, sim a similar approach you use in the underwater environment so that uh, the photon being scattered uh, will be filtered out so you have a relatively clearer image. But the most recent advance has been using uh, uh, principles like uh, time of flight or mo modulation to discriminate against the scattered photons. As we know, the scattered photon travel a longer path. When you hit multiple scattering centers, the photon path takes a longer trip. So by synchronizing the detector and the source, you could gate it out the photons that travel a longer path. Therefore, you get a relatively clear picture. So instead of visibility range in the terms of optical depth from 0 to 2, you can go from 5 to 10. All right, there are other approaches involving uh, pulse modulated uh, systems. You can collect, if you can collect all the photons, the visibility range will go even further. But that's active uh, ongoing research. Along with the visibility range, to build a better, better system to enhance the reach and the resolution, there are ways that we worked on in the past uh, few years to look at uh, means based on post-processing. If you know the point spread function, you run a Fourier transform, you know the modulation transfer function or the ampli amplitude of the uh, optical transfer function, you can deconvolve the outcome to obtain an enhanced image. As you know, we're creatures of vision, and I have, I have always been uh, curious about why in the air we can see miles, but in the water we're looking at meters. 
I understand the physics behind it is pretty much because of the density and the content uh, inside the water body. But uh, because of the needs, both in recreation and industry and defense applications, um, we rely on our eyes or vision to make the final decision. Uh, EO is the ultimate approach, gave you the final resolution, not only in terms of spatial, temporal, but also the details, things like texture that you cannot get from other means. And I believe and I hope we can work hard to explore new technologies to adapt different advances in the underwater environment to benefit the society.